Ding dong, the quickster's dead, the quickster's dead, the quickster's dead. Yeah, I'm still happy about that. Sorry. I'm Flame Flash. This is FlameFlash.net episode 23. I'm actually awake tonight, and I'm excited about Hollow's End. So let's get started. So, I was asked directly on Twitter, how do I podcast? How do I set this all up? Well, Ustream. Ustream Producer. It's a free program. Download it. Get it. Some good features here. I haven't by any means used them all yet. Haven't figured them all out yet. But I can broadcast and I can record and I don't have to trust my browser to do it, even though I like Chrome and Windows 7 a lot. Chrome, Windows 7. Get it. Anyway. From there, from Ustream, I download the Flash video file. The Flash video file, I then take actually and pop it over to my Mac. Yay for Dropbox. It's not the fastest thing in the world for uploading and downloading, but that's why you never see same day delivery of my podcasts either. It takes a evening to upload and then re-download to the other computer. Anyway, from Dropbox, I use my Mac. Now on my Mac I have QuickTime. I have QuickTime 7 Pro. Now I have a professional license thanks to a friend of mine. I'll call him Unimatrix from old StarKingdom.com days. And he bought some Apple software that actually included a QuickTime 7 Pro license when he had preemptively bought one himself not knowing it in was included. So I got a free one. I still use it and thank you Unimatrix very much. Yes, it is a Star Trek reference. From there, QuickTime 7 easily converts to both a YouTube friendly uploadable MP4 also shrinks down the size from the flash video version. And then I export to .aif. This would be the ripping of the sound of my wonderful deep voice for the podcast. And from there I toss the AIF into GarageBand and export it back out into an MP3. It's probably not the most efficient way of doing things, but it is how I do it. From the MP3, from all the technical background stuff, I have registered on iTunes. Hi guys, if you've come over from iTunes. But from there, feed burner. Get yourself a feed burner account. Feed burner comes straight from Google, it's owned by Google, and what this is is an RSS feed redirect. Your feed burner account never changes. You point iTunes at your feed burner RSS feed. Why? Because if you get angry with whatever system you're using to host your site, or in my case, iWeb's going away! Mobile me is dying! I'm going to lose my web hosting service as of June 30th, 2012, I'm going to have to find another one. End of story. Well, when I find another one, I will simply redirect FeedBurner to those new RSS feeds. iTunes won't know the difference. Frankly, FeedBurner is not fond of the iWeb RSS feeds, so I have had to go and grab blogspot so if you ever look at my iTunes page and wonder why in the world flameflash.net's RSS feed is going to a blogger that's why it's more iTunes friendly it's kind of a junk site to hold the podcasts and the links and clean up the description in a way that makes it pretty for iTunes. But flameflash.net, of course, is home base. 
again, I haven't hosted flameflash.net, the domain, in the same place I host where my files are stored. GoDaddy is great. GoDaddy probably offers great service for its hosting capabilities, but I would rather do business separately as far as my web presence goes. Partially I did that because I had MobileMe at the time. I had iTools at the time, if anybody remembers it named that. But iWeb, fortunately, can point to an FTP server. So I'm not going to lose even the look of my site. I'm just going to have to lose the location. But that's where FeedBurner comes in quite handy and where iWeb is going to frankly come in quite handy. So that's kind of in a nutshell how I host and run flameflash.net. I wanted to get that out there in case the folks that were asking were super busy and just wanted to grab that and go. But now I'll get to the Raptor report, which is actually surprisingly small this last week. But this last week was pretty busy, pretty draining. I guess I kind of took a minor vacation from World of Warcraft thanks to knowing uh, this Hallow's End event's coming up. First off, though, would be LEGO Star Wars 3. This is the uh, Clone Wars series that it's based off of, seasons 1, 2, and maybe 3 episodes. We only own season 1 on DVD, so we've gone out of our range of recognizable scenes and levels, but it's still a fun game. Played it for only about half an hour this last week, helping the sun get through a tighter level, only because, well, the toddler decided it would be grand to hit new game on his account and copy over it. Now, the PlayStation 3 has that great, for PlayStation Plus members, auto-upload and backup your save file thing. Well, when a game only has one save file, you're going to get screwed. I actually have issue with the fact that I'm now realizing there are a lot of games out there with only one save file. Now, to get around this, to combat this, because the toddler loves nyum nyum. That's what he calls it, lightsaber noises. Well, to get around this, take a flash drive. Hopefully, you're using an older PS3. Take some flash media, SD, flash card, doesn't really matter. Slide it in, copy your save file over. LEGO Star Wars 3 is not copy protected, unlike, say, Heavy Rain, curse you. So you can go out more than just uploading to the Sony cloud for saves. So his 40% save is nice and safe. Yes, it's 40%, but that's because he hasn't bought all the extra characters, and he's got one or two levels left. He hasn't hit the true Jedi status, so collecting all of the little fobs in there. It's a fun game. It's a satisfying game, to go back to that famous favorite word I seem to enjoy using, but it's a great game to play with the kids. That's the core of it. Now, going from playing with the kids to playing God of War. This would be my first foray into the series. I am glad that I got a red controller, red PS3 controller with the God of War 1 and 2 collection. It's all on one Blu-ray. That's amazing. Two sets of trophies, though. Two platinum trophies on this one disc, which is pretty cool if you're a trophy hound. But it's fun. It's reminds me a heck of a lot of uh, Heavenly Sword, actually. And you're basically some brute running around killing things. Good, mindless, dirty fun. It is M-rated. I don't know fully why it's M-rated yet. Yes, there are little blood splashes, but 
it's not overly graphic quite yet. Maybe it'll get there. I don't know. I'll have to wait and see. I actually have been nicely spoiler free from this. So the next time I have opportunity to play it, I'll certainly adventure out more into if I still agree with the M rating or not. Magic the Gathering. The unlock codes, Magic the Gathering 2012, the unlock codes are now available in the PlayStation Network store and probably the Xbox store. I uh, only had a dollar sitting there on my PlayStation Network account, so I grabbed one of them. That way it's fewer cards to unlock, fewer amount of time that I have to dedicate to the game to fully unlock everything. I like playing with the decks. I don't uh, like unlocking the decks as far as the cards in them are concerned. I prefer when you win a deck, you win the deck. Period. End of discussion. But such is the way of things. This is a nice little money grab for them from me. I will likely be grabbing, for instance, the Time is Money downloadable content for NBA Jam, which pretty much just unlocks everything for you, only because I don't have a lot of time. Time is money. So the NBA Jam on Fire Edition, unlocking everything for five bucks is worth it to play with my sons and maybe daughter in games or maybe even venture to go online and possibly match up against people who have unlocked everything through a dedication of time. I don't have it. World of Warcraft, though. Hallowed Eve has started up. All Hallows Eve and WoW is the Halloween festivities. You have the Headless Horseman as the main bad guy. Kind of like a Corrin Direbrew was the main bad guy of... <laughs> bad guy. You can tell I have kids. But the Headless Horseman charges in, lights fire to starter area towns. So Stormwinds, Goldshire, Ironforges, Dunmoreau, or Karanos, I think is the name of the town. Azir Watch over in by the Exodar. Why they don't attack Dolinar is a mystery to me. I guess the Night Elves and all of that, you know, leafy goodness, they just didn't want to accidentally catch the entire zone on fire. I don't know. It's weird being able to fly, though, now. This is the first cataclysm, post cataclysm. Hallows the Eve, and you can fly now. So on my druid, flight form, bam, I'm on top of the inn, tossing my water bucket down, and then I'm back at the water bucket, or the big water barrel to get more water. It's amazing being able to zip up the building rather than having to run around the building. That flight form is a blessing for this. Now, something else that is pretty awesome about this year's Hallow's End is, thanks to the Cataclysm, things changed. That's what happens in Cataclysms. But South Shore is gone. Gone. Alliance can't go there to clean it up anymore. So if you haven't logged in to check this out yet, you're going to see Stink Bombs and Stormwind. Or Undercity. You're going to see a Wicker Man in Stormwind. A Wicker Man. So the Gilneans are definitely bringing back some of the older Lordaeron traditions, lore-wise. They've rejoined the Alliance and said, you know guys, this was a fun tradition once upon a time. Let's own this tradition again. Let's let the humans own the tradition not the undead. So, as a human, or as an ally of Stormwind, go forth and let's douse the fire that's on the Undercity Wicker Man, and vice versa. Can you tell I play Alliance more? But, 
there are quests now. We have a daily quest hub sitting outside of Stormwind and I would assume outside of Undercity or in the Undercity ruins. I haven't logged into my Blood Elf Rogue yet to check it out. But we have a quest hub. There is no more running up every hour on the hour to the innkeeper and hitting a little trick-or-treat thing and hoping it's not going to either be another bloody penny pouch, the one slot bag that sells for one copper, or you're going to just get turned into something that you can't do anything with for 30 seconds and then log out. This is amazing. You, I love the change. Wife, I'm not sure if she's fully fond of it yet, but you can actually get the Hallowed Helm and the Sinister Squashling from a vendor. Now, if you've been killing the Headless Horseman for years now, don't eat your tricky treats. They have, they are now your currency. Kind of like the uh, chocolates of Noble Garden. These are your currency now. Don't eat them until you've bought everything else and then go for the getting sick on Tricky Treat achievement. Now you can get Tricky Treats from these quests. One being cleaning up Stormwind or Undercity. One being cleaning or er, bombing Stormwind or Undercity with stink bombs. And then going and putting out the fire in the starter town and smashing the pumpkin head of the Headless Horseman in the starter town. There's also a one-shot quest for a stack of 10 tricky treats. Certainly worth it to help a buffer, especially for lower level characters who can't go and kill the Headless Horseman every day. But so far, so good. Already picked up the really nice agility ring for my bear druid and I think I'm going to have to go and be a healer and queue up as a healer to kill the headless horse from from now on just so I won't feel guilty rolling need on those intellect rings yes I'm that far behind in gearing up this time around probably not going to fully gear up though I might use the looking for raid tool and at least see the death of Deathwing once 4.3 hits. I'll probably get a little bit more serious into uh, questing again and heroic running again just to be able to see Deathwing die. But Hallow's End, I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving this new version. There are two new pets besides the Sinister Squashling. You get the Creepy Crate, you get this pretty easily for Alliance, and I would assume the same is true for Horde. The Creepy Crate is simply a quest reward for doing a quest chain that for you can start it in the uh, quest hub, the main quest hub of the rest of the Hallow's End uh, quest, daily quests. Crap, I am getting tired. Or you can go to the Lion's Pride Inn in Stormwind. It's where the original inn, the original bank, the original um, auction house are. Yes, there's the Dwarven District auction house and um, bank now as well, but we're talking about the original area. Now, if the spiders creep you out like they did Red Flare, Fly to the auction house, the original auction house that I'm talking about in Trade District. Haven't done the quest yet on Horde side, I'm sorry. So I hope to actually check that out on my Rogue. Every time I log into my Rogue, somebody's begging me to join their guild because I'm some no-name level 20 Rogue that can, you know, ride around and that's about it. I'm holding out for the rumored heirloom sending abilities before I really do anything Horde side. I have a bunch of great heirloom items and I want to be able to use them effectively. 
it's just not as satisfying to start totally from scratch. Don't know why. But Hollow's End, if you've found it boring in the past or frustrating because it was too much randomness, a lot of that randomness is now gone. You still need to go around and pick up the trick-or-treat buckets at all of the various inns. Well, hello there, too. I actually have a visitor willing to talk to me now in the chat room. Thank you. The tricky treat buckets, but this is another good way to get those tricky treats if you're not wanting to do the dailies every time or if you can't do the dailies every night. I know I certainly am failing at probably doing the dailies. Oh, well, yes. Now I seem to be talking to myself because the chat rooms actually has activity. Thank you. But go forth and enjoy World of Warcraft and the new Hallow's End. All right. So that actually does it for the Raptor Report. You can find me, Flame Flash, on raptor.com there. Um, the Amazon trade-in process to stay on gamer-related news, I've tried it now. I like it. It's a little unfair to either say adequate or good quality when you send things in, but they're fair. If you deem it good, if you're honest, if you've kept your disc and case and booklet in pristine condition like adult gamers, I would expect, do, you're going to get what they offered on the site. It's a great way to pick up, say, oh, Christmas gift pre-orders for the kids. Can't really say what it is, since who knows if they're hiding on the stairs or not. But you can actually trust Amazon's process. So I've tried it and not been burned, at least this once. Who knows if future times will be as successful, but I'm not one that usually trades in my games. Uh, you can also, s I'm wondering why Amazon and PlayStation Network have split. Speaking of Amazon, I went out there and you can't find PlayStation Network codes anymore on Amazon.com when you're buying or want to buy. You're going to have to go to your local store and buy a hard copy code or trust the PlayStation Network with your credit card. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. They've been hacked once. I've been burned once. It's not going to happen again. Buy a card, charge your PlayStation Network account. It's not that big of an inconvenience. So I don't know what's going on there quite yet, but it's one of those broiling things in the background. So we'll see. There is currently a Gamefly sale. If you like your games used, Gamefly has quite a few games on sale used right now. Gamefly, if you're not familiar, it's that game rental service that's out there that I don't know if Netflix, now that Quickster's dead, is actually going to be picking up game rentals, but it's certainly worth checking out this sale. Um, Metroid Other M, for instance, 20 bucks. Brink, $10. Holy crap. I liked Brink, at least the demo on um, Steam. Not enough to buy it, but $10? That's tempting. I'm kind of wary of those secretly hidden online pass things, so I'm not going to risk it. Online passes, if you're not familiar, it's where EA, Sony, and some other companies are saying, if you don't buy this game used, if you don't use the code that we put in the case, you're going to have to buy an online plat pass to play this game online. And since Brink is heavily online, that's a problem. Yes, you can play it single player, but why? All right. Random crap. The Flame Flash randomness. You can say goodbye to Google Buzz. 
finally, I've been wondering and waiting when Google Buzz was going to die and get off my Gmail because Google Plus is now there. Or kind of there. For me, it's floundering. Nobody's going to it! Including myself, really. But then Facebook is kind of dying out too, thanks to the recent update. Fewer people are updating on Facebook now for me. So either all my friends have suddenly gotten lives, or Facebook's changes have killed it off. Oh, wouldn't say that about what? My uh, chat room friend is telling me I'm wrong about Facebook. Ah. Come on, buddy, expound on that. I. But Iron Chef. Oh, I'm looking at my notes. Ah, okay, so your friends haven't been chased off. That's good to know. A lot of mine aren't as uh, tech savvy, so the change is kind of scary sometimes. My mom has trouble turning on her computer at times. So maybe that's why I'm suddenly screwed. Yeah. My Google Plus is kind of dead, too. But Iron Chef on WoW. I got it. If you're not familiar with the Iron Chef series, well, it's a great Food Network series. It's fun. Yes, I actually watch Food Network. But the Iron Chef achievement in World of Warcraft means I've gone and found every single one of the 200 um, recipes that are out there. Yes, anal retentiveness for the win. It's a proud accomplishment for me. I'm sorry. I'll stop bragging now. 2013. If I had more money than brains, next in two years, I would be buying a DeLorean electric car. In 2013. DeLorean. Back to the Future. Those of you that have visited before or listened before, I like Back to the Future. I hope to finally finish the final Back to the Future chapter on PlayStation Network sometime soon. I have a three-day weekend coming up, but BlizzCon is probably going to eat that up as I use my virtual ticket excitedly. However, a DeLorean. If I had more money than brains, I would buy one to drive around in and another to just stare at and keep pristine. Yeah. I apologize. Too much of a Back to the Future fan, I suppose. Also, speaking of 80s items, Transformers 4 and 5 are now rumored. I liked the trilogy. Please, keep it a trilogy, especially if you're not going to bring back everybody. It was bad enough in number three that you it felt choppy cutting out Megan Fox, but since they weren't married, it worked barely for me. Megan Fox may not have been the best actress to choose for the series, but cutting her out hurt the transition from two to three. Saying that in three, Shy or Shia. <laughs> I won't repeat that. This is a child's program. Not that you said anything too negative. Too uh, negative regarding that, Megan Fox. Um, a couple of final objects: the iPhone 3GS. If you want one, yes, it's two models outdated. But AT&T is now basically giving them away if you buy a two-year contract. Or $375, I think it was, if you want to buy an unlocked version. So if you want a couple of models behind, if you're okay with that, it's a tried-and-true tested model, and you get an iPhone, finally, if you don't have one yet. I actually use an Android that's just me. Speaking of cell phones, this poor soul, um, she has two deaf brothers. This made slash dot news, I think it was. 
she got confronted with a $201,000 cell phone bill. Wow. And the two people that charged it up were her deaf brothers, which adds a minor tone of amusing irony to the entire situation. Now, they did it naturally with um, data charges, texting charges. T-Mobile has the sidekick which is actually pretty heavily used by the deaf community. I really liked mine when I had one. And they were visiting Canada and forgot to switch to an international plan. <coughs> right in the back. T-Mobile was uh, kind enough to cut this to $2,500 and give her six months to pay it off. So, a kindly reminder, if you travel internationally, remember to change your cell phone plan before you do so. Or, get a disposable cell phone for when you're out of country. Don't take your expensive one with you. Don't take your expensive smartphone. Get some cheap, crappy thing in that country to use and call out from. Yes, people you know won't know who the heck you are, but leave voicemail. They'll call you back. Or leave voicemail to get the point across. It's not that big of a deal. Finally, though, the PlayStation Vita has a February 22nd release date for the United States. Yes, this is Flame Flash Randomness. I go from gaming to T-Mobile, to Google Buzz, what have you. I'm on uh, Twitter, by the way, as Flame Flash. And anyway, PlayStation Vita. I have mixed feelings about it. The 3DS, grand old time, for some reason, even though I don't have any 3D games. It's a glorified DS at the moment for me. But... I'm not much of a mobile gamer, I've figured out. When I'm sitting someplace waiting for something, I'm usually chasing a child. I don't have the time to pick up a mobile gaming device. Or I'm begging the child to perhaps play Angry Birds on my cell phone so he'll sit down and stay put for a few minutes. But... So I have mixed feelings about the PlayStation Vita. I like the PSP. The PSP has served my family well. Four kids, nine, seven, and three, and eight months. So it gets busy. Yes, yikes. And I apologize, folks, but this is why you should come you stream with me. You can actually enjoy uh, chatting with me in the uh, chat room, too. So I thank you. I would attempt to pronounce your name but I'm not quite sure how it splits up or whatnot. Lauren Anna C. But I'm Flame Flash. Podcast at flameflash.net if you'd like to send in questions that way. Twitter, which is how I got the how do I podcast question that I talked about at the top of the show. At Flameflash. And flameflash.net podcast is also hiding out there on Facebook, though it's sometimes a bit quiet because I think the app that I used to use for RSS feed updates has decided to go belly up. Oh well. That avenue isn't very active anyway. I think Twitter is my new favorite at the moment. But I'm Flame Flash. Thank you, Laura Nanasi, for stopping by. And I'll be signing off for now. Flameflash.net